Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we're talking about Azure Maps Power BI Visual and whether that visual will deliver us out of our current predicament with respect to mapping in Power BI. I have to admit, I don't normally put too much planning into my videos. Uh, a lot of them I kind of improvise on the fly. Um, in this particular case, I have two things that I would like to talk about. Number one, uh, talk about this uh, announcement from Azure blog about the Azure Maps Power BI Visual. Uh, looks pretty promising. And number two is just to talk in general about the state of mapping support in Power BI and some of the beef that I have with um, existing functionality and uh, in the context of hoping that this new visual will address some of those uh, issues eventually. So let's take a look at the announcement first. So as you can see, as of uh, July 13th, 2020, that's when this announcement was published. Azure Maps Power BI Visual now is in preview. If you're gonna pause this video and go and check whether it's already available in Power BI, uh, don't waste your time. Here in this article, they talk about how you need to go to options, preview features, and enable it in the current version of Power BI Desktop, which would have been Ju June's version. That feature is not in yet. So I'm hoping and I'm guessing that this feature will be available in the upcoming July release of Power BI. Look like that visual will have a bunch of different features. The first feature is called Bubble Layer. And uh, effectively all we're able to do is put a bunch of different bubbles and color them in different colors. Um, surprisingly, uh, this is a big problem in current map today. Specifically, the problem is with bubble sizes. If you stick around to the end of this video or second half of the video, I will be talking in detail about what the problems are and where we need the improvements. So what's important here is, uh, there is a mention here that uh, there will be a way to customize the size of the bubble. And uh, we will be looking at a different article that goes into more detail, but there's gonna be a logarithmic way to support the size. And I think that might address one of the biggest peeves and the biggest problems with the mapping control today that's default in Power BI. The next feature that the article talks about is the 3D bar chart layer. Basically ability to, put, to, uh, to use these 3D bars on the map. Uh, feels a little gimmicky to me, but uh, if you are exposed to a lot of maps in, your, in the reports that come your way, to have a different map maybe will provide some variety. I'm not sure if um, if it's gonna have any storytelling features that are missing in normal maps, but uh, um, I welcome this, although I don't think this is particularly revolutionary and uh, needed right now, but I will take it. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, the next feature talks about being able to load a GeoJSON file that contains custom location data, and that file can be uploaded and overlaid on a map. So you're able to provide some custom um, JSON files to extend uh, the default information on the map. I'd have to see exactly how this works. I think it looks interesting. Normally, um, if I have to manually load files, that means some sort of hard coding. So I'm not a big fan. Hopefully I will be able to provide that file uh, from a database somehow where I could do have a little bit more flexibility but um, not a bad feature, looks pretty interesting. The next feature that they're talking about is ability to do custom tile layer. And the example of the custom tile layer here is the uh, uh, weather tiles. So we're able to, for example, to look at the sales and see what the weather is like. And maybe if I'm in the retail business to see if as, um, as the weather gets worse, my sales maybe shrink. So I think this is interesting. It leaves a couple of questions. I will talk about them a little bit later as to uh, who's paying for the weather data and how all that stuff is happening, but we will talk about this a little bit later. But I think ability to overlay, create custom tiles on top of the normal maps, I think it's pretty cool and opens up a lot of opportunity for the uh, partner ecosystem to enhance this. Lastly, uh, we have a, a ability to uh, display real-time traffic overlay. So that's really cool. So in this case, we have different salespeople or agents driving around in the city, and then we can take a look at the congestion information and do some sort of real-time advice services to our sales field, sales force, with respect to which route to take. 
So I think this is cool. Um, again, the question is, where does the real-time traffic come from? Is it free? How does it occur? So all of those types of things uh, are questions, but I think it's, uh, it's a cool feature, definitely. Now we're looking at the second article, um, now located at a different uh, portion of the site, uh, and it talks in more depth about the control. What we can glean from this article, number one, is that it does not require pro or premium license, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it does work in a desktop and in a service, so that's pretty cool. Um, and here we have some more examples, and here are these bars again. I think it's a pretty busy map, but uh, I'm always willing to learn. Maybe uh, there's some things we could do by combining the 2D and 3D effects. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be an open-minded about this. So this, this is another example of using this map. So now let's have a bit of a discussion about this, uh, this news. So this Azure map visual is going to be in preview. And uh, in preview, it looks like it's going to be free. However, uh, Azure Maps is a service. It's a paid service that's a feature of Azure. And it's still not clear, or at least it's not clear from the two articles that we have at our, at our disposal. We don't know if it's going to be free for now, and then it's going to grow into a, uh, a paid or some sort of paid uh, version. We don't know. Uh, and I will talk a little bit more about that in, in a little bit. Um, in terms of the limitations, there are two uh, interesting limitations. Limitation number one, today it does not do any geocoding, which means it will not take your zip code or address information or state. You have to provide lat and long, which is okay. I mean, it's in preview, so it's fair. And uh, the other limitation is actually very exciting. Uh, here it says that the visual will support up to 30,000 data points. I believe the current one supports eight to 10,000 data points. I could be off. Um, I know that Microsoft is bumping that limit up every now and then. So it might be higher, maybe 20,000 right now. But I have run into a situation where I had too many data points and we could not map them all on, on the existing map control. So starting out with 30,000 data points, I think it's great. So let's talk about some of the questions that I have about this control. Number one is, I already mentioned it before, is it free or is it gonna be paid? Uh, sounds like it's gonna be free in preview, but uh, I think it raises a lot of questions when Microsoft delivers something for free and then changes it back into a paid um, type of scenario. I think uh, it's always good to be very open about this upfront. So uh, doing a little bit of research, you could see that Azure Map Maps is a feature of uh, Microsoft Azure. You could purchase that capability, that component. It supports a bunch of cool, really interesting capabilities. And here we see that there is a pricing model. I'm not an expert on this particular Azure feature or Azure component. Uh, looks like $5 per thousand transactions. Um, this is not gonna be cost prohibitive, I think. Uh, giving this uh, pricing model, but uh, I, I, I can't say that I understand very well what that transaction means. So if uh, painting one tile on the map is a transaction and I have a thousand tiles to paint a world map, well, that changes this whole thing considerably. So because I'm ignorant and not well versed on exactly how this thing is working, I suggest everybody we need just to study up on this feature and see if we could figure that out. But whether this is gonna be free or paid, is uh, question number one, and I'd like to get an answer as quickly as possible. Number two, if this is paid, how do we enable that Azure service? And what I mean by that is when I work for a smaller company, that discussion and that coordination and communication between the business community and IT community uh, usually is pretty simple. You just have to go across the, you know, acro across the office, across the room, and talk to your IT guy to enable and spin up an Azure service. When you work for a company with 20 plus thousand employees, spinning up these capabilities, configuring these capabilities, configuring plumbing, security, billing, all of that, and wiring it back into the Power BI could be an issue. Um, and I'm not as much worried about the, the, the dollar aspect of it. I'm worried about all of the logistics, governance, communication, setup, all of those other processes that have to take place before a feature is enabled. If this Azure mapping control becomes amazing and if it can satisfy all of the problems and uh, 
that provide all of the capabilities that we could ask. And we fall in love with this control. And then it turns out that it takes a lot of work and coordination with IT to have it enabled. Uh, that would be very frustrating. So if there is a way, if it's, it does become a paid model, if there is a way to easily spin it up at the workspace level where we could take some shortcuts with respect to spinning up all these components, I think that'd be awesome. And the last question is pretty self-explanatory. So we're getting the preview this month. Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know if we're going to get the next feature update in six months, in 12 months. Uh, Microsoft has a bit of a history of starting things and then either dropping them or not really seeing them uh, through all the time. So uh, I'm always a little bit anxious. And we all, all know what happens uh, when you look at V1 of uh, or preview versions of some of these things. So uh, having a little bit of clarity on are we looking at three to six months before it goes from preview to GA? Are we looking at 12 months, 18 months? What the full featured control will look like? What the roadmap is? I think it would be great to get the clarity on this. The early version of it, the, according to the article yet, looks very promising, but knowing what the full, fully baked roadmap is would be awesome. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about the roadmap as time goes by. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about that I will be covering some of the issues that I think I would like that new control to address. So now what I'm going to do is show you, give you a couple of examples of the issues that we're seeing in the mapping controls charts today and uh, talk about the opportunity that Microsoft has to, to bridge and improve on with this new Azure map uh, visual. So let's air my grievances uh, with respect to the mapping capabilities in Power BI. Problem number one is quality of geocoding. So here, what I have is I have a coronavirus dashboard where we're tracking the confirmed cases by county and country. And uh, on this visual, I've, I'm mapping every single US county and number of confirmed cases. And you can see that uh, these counties are mainly located in the United States, but somehow due to the military expansion policies we've enabled, that enabled us to uh, have all these counties in just about every part of the world, Australia, Africa, uh, Asia, and Europe. So if I mouse over those counties, you could see that this is Aurora County in South Dakota, US. For some reason, it decided that's located somewhere um, in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, this African country houses the ocean, New Jersey County, Valencia County, New Mexico is located somewhere in, looks like Spain. So you can see that we have a lot of different geocoding issues. And uh, the way this county field is done is just county name, comma, state, comma, country. And it's properly geocoded as a county. But you see that existing geocoding leaves a lot to be de uh, desired. Now, a quick hint and a quick tip. Uh, a lot of times you can improve the geocoding by uh, implementing a drill down in your map. So if you pull in a state and then below you pull in a county and state just has a state name and county just has a county name without state uh, definition, then what you could do is you could see that it's showing all of the states correctly. Then you just drill down, expand down level of hierarchy and then what it will do, it will uh, paint all of the county for their respective states. So now you can see that this geocoding worked much better uh, because of this hierarchical setup of the map. So if you are struggling with your map and your geocoding is all over the place and you're looking at US counties in Japan or in Australia, the way you fix it is by creating a hierarchy state to a county. You just drill down and then geocoding works much better. The next problem has to do with the bubble size. And Microsoft has done some improvement and you have a little bit of control over the bubble size, but it's nowhere near enough to be satisfactory. Let me demonstrate. So here we have different counties and in these counties, uh, the size of the bubble is number of confirmed cases. So if I mouse over this county in green, it says that number of confirmed cases is 207. When I go to uh, this county, 
the number of confirmed cases is 1,062. If I go to this county, the number of confirmed cases is 11,000. And what's interesting is all three of these bubbles are exactly the same size. So there's got to be a better way for us to, to control the sizes of the bubbles. So I read that in the new visual, there's going to be several ways to control the sizing, including the logarithmic way. Uh, I think that's what will ultimately solve this problem. But right now, if you have to display a large number of dots and the distribution of sizes is weird, where you have a bunch of different outliers, you have several uh, data, data points with very large numbers, then these bu bubbles become basically meaningless. So the, the big bubbles, the outliers, skew the sizing logic so badly that the sizing becomes basically meaningless. So what I do is I complement, I deal with that by not relying on size so much, but basically relying on color, right? So I implemented this map in such a way where map that the, the size of the bubble may be a little bit misleading, but the color tell, tells a much better story. So here I'm looking at the distribution of cases and that helps me understand which areas of US got hit worse than others. The next problem, that we talked about was number of data points. I already said that um, I've run into multiple issues when Power BI was not able to paint all of the data points necessary. So having 30,000 data points in the new visual is, uh, is, is a definitely a welcome addition. And the last problem that I, I think we have to fix with mapping is overall performance. So once you have a certain amount of dots or data points on the map, it becomes really difficult to work. So I'm trying to move this and if I try to zoom in, so I'm zooming in right now on a mouse and it takes several seconds for it to respond. I understand that there's a lot of data points on the map, but I would expect the map to be a lot more responsive. And this map, the map control is actually much better. If I go into the field map, watch what happens. I'm just gonna click on field map. And then let's see how long it'll take to paint that map. So again, we're seeing some geocoding issues of where it's painting those counties in other, in other parts of the world. But let me go ahead and zoom in on just US. And you can see I'm trying to zoom in, zoom out, just kind of interact with the map. And you see how long it takes to paint this. Okay. So we'll be watching this maybe for 20, 30 seconds, maybe a minute until the entire map is painted. So this sort of uh, performance again is then inadequate so I'm really hoping that the new control if we're gonna get into the mode where we'll have to pay extra for mapping which I don't mind uh, mapping even in the article themselves Microsoft did the research that 80% of all data has a geospatial component to it so it's very important to have it if I have to pay extra to get a an awesome map then I'm ready to do this but that map better be awesome so if I have to wait 60 seconds, you know, two minutes to paint uh, a United States map at the country level, that's not acceptable. And hopefully uh, the new control will address that. That's about it for today. Let me know if uh, you guys have your own issues with mapping controls. If you guys think there's other opportunity for Microsoft to do better with respect to mapping. Hope you found this interesting and look for the Azure map control to be available in the next release of Power BI Desktop. I'm not sure when that desktop will become available, hopefully this week. So I can't wait to enable that control and see what we could do with this. So as soon as I get it, I will probably do a follow-up review and uh, talk about what I think about that early preview of the control. Thanks for stopping by. Looking forward to see you back again. Bye.